As you know, Snapdragon X Elite laptops are now out and early benchmarks have confirmed what Qualcomm has been claiming all along. You might have heard the allegations that Qualcomm might be cheating at benchmarks. Why would they do that? It doesn't make any sense. They're about to release this chip to the world to be proven wrong. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. But also these new benchmarks that have been released by Signal 65. Um, no, that, that was... That's iPhone 65. Did they change careers? Signal 65 is a third party company, but they're brand new. A new company, it's called Signal 65. They started like five months ago. And it really hits at the performance claims made by technology companies from the data center all the way to the client computer and everything in between. We want to be the trusted partner, the validator, help vendors understand if they're really meeting the mark and then ultimately help the consumers understand if these technological promises that are being made are real. This study was commissioned by Microsoft. They're testing only the Surface laptop. Just wanted to put that out there and let you know that you should always be skeptical about things you see on the internet, including this video. So until I get these laptops in here, which are coming less than a month, and do my own set of tests, including software development related stuff. And by the way, not only benchmarks, I like to do real world tests here as well, because benchmarks tell you one thing, real world experiences tell you a whole different story. So make sure you don't miss that stuff. Signal 65 released their PDF. They do have some interesting results here that we haven't seen before. Here we see the comparison between the new Surface laptop, which is getting kind of hot. Not as hot as the MSI Prestige, which gets up to 56.2 degrees, but still 50 degrees for the Surface laptop compared to the Intel Core 7 Surface Laptop 5. That one's at 47 degrees and the MacBook Air M3 is at 45.8 degrees. This is performance under load. It does actually pretty well in Cinebench for its thermal performance. 37 degrees bested only by the Apple MacBook Air M3. And I'm sorry that they use such small fonts here. Let's take a look at the sound and fan noise. Ooh, that MSI is not getting good scores. I recently tested an MSI machine right here on my desk and compared it with the MacBook Pros. You can check out the videos. And yeah, those are not quiet machines. Powerful, but they suck up juice and they're not quiet. The X Elite is not silent either. Here's something people will really be interested in, especially people that are gonna get these new laptops. And in my opinion, one of the biggest reasons to go this way is the battery life. You're gonna be able to sit on an airplane ride and not worry about plugging in. That's a game changer for Windows machines. The new Surface laptop with Snapdragon Elite gets the longest battery life according to these tests. Of course, Intel 12th generation Core i7 gets the worst scores and MacBook Air is doing pretty well with the Intel Core Ultra 7 getting up to almost the same levels as the MacBook Air. I haven't tested a Core Ultra machine yet for developers here, but if you are interested in that, let me know in the comments. That's video playback though, right? So it lasts a long time watching videos, big deal. But not only that, it does really well in productivity battery test, similar to the tests I've done on the channel here, where I ran a loop in Python. I'll probably do this test uh, for these machines also when I get them. I don't know why they didn't plot the MacBook Air M3 on this, but it says the Air M3 offers equivalent battery life. So they just didn't plot that. But it does show the X Elite does pretty well in this battery test. The Core Ultra 7 is not too far behind. And of course they did the Geekbench 6.3, just to review here real quick. Uh, MacBook Air M3 does 10% faster than the Snapdragon X Elite. If you're gonna be doing official reports for Microsoft and you wanna look like you know what you're talking about, at least spell it correctly. It's Snapdragon X Elite, okay? But iPhone 65 is new. I mean, uh, Signal 65. Give them a little break. They do show that Snapdragon X Elite is 20% faster than the previous generation of Surface Laptop and pretty much faster than everything else except for the MacBook M3. However, in multi-threaded, why is it better than the MacBook M3 and everything else? Well, the Snapdragon X Elite has 12 cores. The MacBook Air M3 only has eight cores. In multi-threaded tests, cores matter. So per core, the M3 seems to do better in these tests than the Snapdragon X Elite. But when you are taking an overall system as a whole, the X Elite is better. And if you're just buying a laptop and they're the same price, buy the one that's faster. But it depends on your workflow, of course. We've got some Cinebench results. Of course, we got single thread and multi-thread, similar results as Geekbench here. Let's take a look at AI performance, or as all the keynote speakers like to announce it as AI, AI, AI. I swear, every single keynote where Satya Nadella is speaking, there's always all this echo in the room. Computer vision tests, X Elite does really well here. Now, it seems to me like the tests they're running, MobileNet V3, YOLO, DeepLab, ResNet, I'm willing to bet that all this stuff is not used 
using the Apple Neural Engine, but instead running on the Apple's GPU on the M3. But perhaps on the XLE, these libraries allow you to access that new NPU, the Neural Processing Unit, in which case, yeah, it will be faster because the NPU is designed for this task specifically, whereas the GPU is more general. Uh, G stands for general. No, I'm just kidding. Graphics. All right, all right. Don't subscribe to me if you don't want to. Ah, media processing. I've done some FFmpeg tests on this channel before. Really curious to see how this does because this is part of my workflow personally. And wow, the Intel Core Ultra does really well over here. Maybe I should get that machine in here ASAP. But not too far behind is the Snapdragon X Elite. Here we've got Google Chrome, and this is one of my typical tests that I show on this channel. Speedometer V3 and Jetstream V2. We got things like JavaScript execution, WebAssembly, and it looks like they used Chrome for this. I usually add other browsers as well, but it does really well here. However, the M3 is pretty unbeatable here in this case. And since JavaScript is basically a single core operation, this kind of tells you what you need to know about how your applications in the browser will execute. The M3 core is apparently more speedy, will beat the X Elite cores since we're talking about single core operations here. Productivity. We got breakdowns of Word, Excel, PowerPoint. You can check these out. They don't have any software development related to tests, but that's why you're gonna be subscribed to my channel to check those out. Now this one surprised me, 3D Mark tests. I thought the X-Elite would kill the MacBook Air M3 here, but they also have a little caveat here because the different supported features and platforms on all three of these 3DM Mark tests, understanding the results can be a bit confusing. There's DirectX 12 compared to Metal. Maybe the technologies don't match, so you won't be able to run the same kind of software, but it's the end result that matters. If you have a software package available on one system and a software package on another system, if that's what you need to use, you get the faster machine that runs it, right? And at the end, they give you exact specs of the machines that they used. They used a MacBook Air M3 with 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigabytes SSD, not the base model. For the MSI machine, they used 32 gigabytes of RAM with a Core Ultra 7 155H. And then the new Surface laptop with Snapdragon X Elite. This is the 80 SKU, so it's the middle skew not the highest end skew because the surface laptop is not going to have the highest end skew probably due to the thermals that we've seen here using the 80 skew it's already pushing the 50 degree mark limit if they put an 84 in there it uh, probably wouldn't do so well we're going to get these laptops in our hands in less than a month been waiting for them for a long time be patient if you uh, don't have the budget to go and buy and be an early adopter here just wait until you see more results especially for your workflows if you're a software developer you'll come to my channel and take a look at what I'm doing. Now, my workflows might be a little bit different than your workflows, but I'll try to do some real world tests for a lot of different uh, folks that have been requesting specific tests. People are curious how WSL2 is going to work. SQL Server, Linux. How is Prism going to work? Prism is the translation layer between x86 programs. How are x86 programs going to run on this new machine? And how is Xcode going to work on it? Just kidding. Xcode is not going to work on it. That's for Max. I'm going to be skeptical and I urge you to be skeptical as well, especially when you see people on YouTube claiming all kinds of crazy stuff. This guy. I'm just a guy on YouTube sharing my thoughts and my experiences, but I'm not getting paid by Microsoft. So, hey, you can take that with a grain of salt too. Now, this was Surface Laptop. There's been a bunch of other laptops that have been released with the X Elite and X Plus chips, and I made a video about that right over here. Check that out, and I'll see you in the reviews.